Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to talk about design patterns. Now, if you're an established programmer, you've probably already broached this subject, but if you're fairly new to uh, the programming world, you may not have. And this is one of those posts that could potentially change your life in many ways. Um, design patterns are a fairly simple concept. When we work in the world of programming, we're solving the same problems over and over and over again, to the point where patterns start to emerge. You could say design patterns, and thus the name was born. Now, this all came about from a book that was released many, many years ago from a group called the Gang of Four, uh, which are Eric Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson, and John Velizdes. Uh, they released a book called Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. Now, this book is in its 100th release. I have no idea how many times it's been released, but it gets updated and re-released all the time. Uh, and it's pretty much one of those probably five fundamental books that pretty much every programmer should own, uh, along with uh, another one that's mentioned here, actually, Code Complete uh, and Clean Code. Actually, those are also very popular books on the, the world of software design or development. And um, design patterns are one of those things where they're not or they weren't as common in the world of game development, but they are definitely becoming more so. And we've seen little bits of it. You've seen certain design patterns in action, probably without even knowing it. The Unity game engine and the Unreal game engine, for example, uh, the Godot game engine, a lot of them are implementing design patterns in the way they work. Their entity component systems, uh, the observer pattern, the way that um, callbacks work, etc., are often implemented via design patterns. And so that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to go run out and buy this book, of course, it, if you want to buy a book, it is a good book to buy, and I will link it down below if you're interested. But there is a free uh, C-sharp implementation of pretty much all of the 23 design patterns from the Gang of Four, uh, and they're uh, available on DoeFactory.com. I'll link this down below as well, uh, implemented in C-sharp. And what you're seeing here in the original book, uh, the Design Patterns book, I believe it's implemented in uh, C++ and possibly Smalltalk. Um, but this is a, a web-based, completely free implementation of a number of the various different design patterns available. And you'll see the different kinds. It's broken down into what they're all about. So creational patterns are about creating new instances of objects. There are ways to go about doing things. One of them you've probably heard of is called a singleton. Now, a singleton is probably the most popular design pattern. Some people would call it an anti-pattern or something to avoid, but I'm not going to get into that argument. But uh, if you've if you've encountered a singleton, you've encountered a design pattern. A singleton is basically a way of making a global instance of an object. It's like a global variable, but it has control over uh, when it is instantiated and guarantees that its initialization did in fact happen. Uh, so that's a very common design pattern, but these other ones are as well. Things like builders and uh, factors are ways of controlling uh, how instances are created of multiple classes. Now, if you go into any particular one of these, like for example, the singleton, uh, you'll see how commonly they are used. A UML diagram showing the, the class composition, in this particular case, is a very simple one. So the UML diagram is very simple. And then you'll see um, a structured example and then a real world example showing you how to actually implement this particular singleton. Uh, so here's a class load balancer that is implementing the singleton pattern. Uh, so this is an invaluable site that you should check out. And some of the ones that you're going to really find uh, probably most applicable to game development. Again, singleton, uh, factory or builder for sure can be, especially if your object create, if you have a game that is uh, instantiating a number of different objects or a number of different types of objects, and you want to treat them in a generic way for sure. Uh, you get into structural patterns. Um, you got facade, uh, proxy flyway uh, adapter, a bunch of these could actually be useful. Uh, down here also you've got things like uh, command, um, observer pattern is really, really heavily used. State patterns also very commonly used. Now state is, uh, you know, when something has an internal uh, value that can change and you want to monitor when those particular changes occur. Um, so these things are all very, very, very useful. One of the ones that's used very commonly is the observer pattern. And here you can see that you are, uh, the UML diagram in action of this particular pattern. Now, I don't have time to go into all of these patterns, but I am curious if you want to see me go into some of them specifically. And that is something I can do. I can do a specific video on um, the observer pattern or um, you know various different design concepts out there or things like inversion of control. Um, so if there's design specific topics you want me to, sub to cover, please do let me know. However, and one of the reasons why I haven't jumped head first into this is the existence of a book called Game Programming Patterns. Now when I say a book, uh, it's available as a book, but it's also available entirely online. And this is an excellent book. Basically, this is a guy that has taken the topic of design patterns and applied them to game development. 
And if you go to this site, gameprogrammingpatterns.com, once again, I will link this down below in the comments, uh, you can come down, so there are various different ways to buy it. You can buy it in print form, you can buy it in ebook form, but you can also go right on the on their website and read it directly on the website. And here you're seeing a lot of, so this is a command flyweight observer prototype singleton state. We go back to the original gang of four list and you're gonna see command uh, state um, singleton, etc. So these are, these are game dev specific implementations of those various different game design patterns. And you see some of these that are actually also, they're not really patterns as established by the industry, but these are common problems in the world of game development. So you can see down here, uh, object pooling, spatial partitioning, which would be useful for obviously uh, breaking a 3D space up into a data structure. Uh, you've got behavioral patterns that aren't specifically, uh, or game loop. These are not directly related to the gang of four type patterns. Those are mostly here but they are things you should be aware of. And when you come in here, for example, let's go to the uh, the singleton pattern. It's, again, it's one of the most popular ones. Um, we go down here, we can actually see some of the pluses, some of the minus, but you can see real world um, implementations of said pattern. Uh, go down here, you can see an explanation of why to use a particular pattern, and hopefully, why not to use the pattern. Uh, so this is a great read about uh, a number of different implementations for a number of different design patterns. Now design patterns really are, they're solutions to problems that you have over and over and over again. These are the kind of things that you should know in your head as a programmer as basic building blocks because you'll find yourself implementing these naturally. And you're probably gonna find yourself implementing them naturally poorly. So when you're aware that something exists as a pattern and you find yourself following that pattern, you can go down and look at said pattern. And then you can also get into a couple things like down here, and this is a very, very, very common one, is a component pattern. And this is where um, basically you break the structure of your game objects into a container which holds a number of different components. And if you've used Unity, you immediately understand the component pattern because it is implemented as components. And frankly, most game engines are going down this road. Uh, it's a way of making data manageable, uh, making the relationships, the couplings looser. So you don't want a lot of tight couplings. You don't want object A to know about object B if object A and B don't need to know about each other. Even if you need to create object C, which acts as an interface between the two. And that's the kind of stuff that design patterns solves. Uh, so I do highly recommend you come and you start uh, probably here. This is the website you should start on. Uh, read these, know these, learn these, love these, because they will change the way you look at coding. And that is a good thing. Now there's not there's nothing else there to say that a design pattern is law. And I really wanna tell you something here. Just because a design pattern exists, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you should do. And this is another area where people really run into mistakes or make problems where they, um, especially when you learn a new design pattern, it's sort of like the old saying, when all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, once you've learned about a design pattern, you want to apply it even when it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, it's another tool in the toolbox and nothing more. What you can end up doing is creating, um, if you look at the world of Java development, Java was heavily used in uh, educational uh, research development and corporate development. And you'll find a lot of vastly, horrifically, sickly over-engineered solutions as well. Well, when someone first learns about design patterns, they tend to go down that road a little too extreme. And just be aware that you can make that mistake. You know, design patterns are solutions to common problems, but don't create new problems just because you can. not So that's one of the, the real warnings I can give you there. Um, so this is just kind of, um, you know, an introduction, in, in, you know, if, if you already knew about design patterns, you probably learned nothing today. Uh, but if you haven't, trust me, spend the time, spend the afternoon, go through this site and read about patterns. Start with the introduction. Be sure to do um, all of these ones right here are critical. And then a couple of these are more um, specific to your implementation. So, you know, component is definitely interesting. Service locator is a very useful pattern, especially if you've got, what you would use a service locator for is something like uh, if you had, uh, a runtime rendering swap. So you gave the user configuration for doing things like uh, I can run Metal, OpenGL, Vulkan, or Direct3D um, renderers, and they can set it via their any file for which one runs. Well, if you can use something like a service locator to actually pick which subservice to load and run. So that's the kind of solution that these patterns are meant to dissolve, to resolve. And then the rest of these are kind of 
get to them when you need them kind of lookups. But of course, you know, it's the kind of site you can read from beginning to end and you will learn a lot. Now don't take what is written as law. Um, you're not going to help to just take it, read it, absorb it, use it if you can. Don't use it if it doesn't make sense. But uh, design patterns are definitely one of those tools that you should have in your repertoire. Um, so I hope you did find that useful, at least some of you. Uh, it's kind of all I'm gonna get at today. Again, if you do go through this process and there are patterns that either aren't clear to you or you wanna have more explanation, Granted, this site does a very, very good job. So there may not actually be any examples where it makes sense for me to do a tutorial about it. But if there are some that you actually want to hear more about, please do let me know in the comments down below. And I can actually do a video on specific design patterns. This is one of those things that isn't focused on enough. This is, as far as I know, the only game-related book on this subject. Um, and it is an invaluable subject. So do take the time and invest in it. And if you do have some further questions and you would like to see a video on a specific pattern, do let me know. I'll see what I can do. All right, that's it for today. See you later. Goodbye.